Okay, so this is going to be my definitely overkill workhorse editing, streaming, maybe a little bit of gaming PC that you're looking at right here. <sighs> and we're gonna be diving into it, building it here today. So let's hop in. All right, so I'm gonna have everything that we're gonna to use today. Of course, I know you just saw it in the montage, but still have it all linked down below in the description of this video. For the motherboard, we went with this Creator TRX 40. Just because I was looking at everything, this has got a ton of ports. Of course, it needed to support Threadripper because it's my first ever AMD build. Also for today, we do have a top down so you guys can get a better angle of everything that we're gonna be doing. We are liquid cooling, hard line liquid cooling, which is also a first that's gonna be very interesting as well. A few inches later. What? We are throwing a 3970X in this, 128 gigs of RAM. It's it's the works, all right? It's literally, I went pretty balls to the wall. Obviously, could have even went a little crazier, but again, it's mostly a creator-style PC, so didn't really want to SLI. I need room for actual, like, capture cards, stuff like that, so. Anyways, all that said, let's just go ahead, let's hop in. Let's get the CPU seated and start getting everything ready to go. By the way, this is my buddy Brown right here. He wanted to be a part of the hardline tubing, which hopefully we get to. As of this filming right now, we're actually waiting on the inserts that we need so we can actually bend them. We got the heat gun, we got all that, but waiting on those because we're living in a COVID-19 land where stuff just, you have to wait on, you have to wait on things. Hundred and twenty-eight gigs, man. I have never seen that much RAM <laughs> in a computer <laughs> before. That is, that is quite a lot of RAM here. So this is Corsair's XC9 RGB CPU water block. Yeah, so try not AMD, and we're going again, like I said, full on Corsair, custom loop, RGB hydro series stuff. I'm ready to see this thing. Me too. I just always put a little glob on there, put it on. But why not try? What Corsair says to do, we'll just see how it goes. It's a pretty nice smooth amount. All right, so let's see if this applicator works the way it shows it's supposed to. It's pretty nifty. I'd say it does, yeah. Okay, so we got RAM installed. We now have the actual water block installed on the CPU, and then we have our M.2 sticks all installed. So we are now ready to actually go inside the case. All right, so here's the case. Lee and Lee, I'm pretty sure if you watch any of these videos, you're pretty familiar with this case. A lot of people like to use these cases, especially with the liquid cooling builds, but it's just because it's one of the best out there, man. I mean, you, you can see so much from the side, so much from the front, and it's modular, and it's gonna fit everything I need to fit in, in it without it being too, like, compact. Okay. All right, so we've got an XR7 360 right here. A little, a little thicker, so this is going to go down bottom, and then we got another 360 right here. This is a little thinner. This is going to go up top. Look That's at that. That's nice looking. Yeah. Is it light? Yeah, it's not that heavy. I mean, not for how big it looks, and the fact that it's yeah. all metal. Like, Several days later. Okay, so it has been just a little bit since we were working on this because I'm still, right now as of this recording, waiting for the silicone insert to go inside this hardline tubing. However, while we wait, because it's just supposed to be here tomorrow, what I wanted to do is go ahead and get a jump start on what is basically the final sort of steps of this build, which is taking this RTX 2080 Ti apart, which I've never done. I've never taken a GPU apart before. So I'm pretty excited about that piece. We're gonna take off the air cooler that came with it. This is the overclock edition of the 2080 Ti, and then putting on Corsair's X G7 RGB GPU water block. So we are going to be putting this on to that today. But basically, if you're not familiar with hardline tubing, what you need is an, a silicone insert because it's heat resistant to go inside this because to bend this, you gotta get super hot, right? So to do your 90 degree angles or whatever it might be that you need to do, it needs to get super hot. And if you don't have anything on the inside of it, it won't retain its shape. So you have to get silicone insert to put in there and then while you're bending it, it will retain its shape on the inside and you won't have any sort of weirdness happening. So I've never done it before and I wanna make sure I'm doing it as properly 
as I possibly can. However, since the last time we did record, I did do a couple of things. I went ahead and installed the XD5 RGB Corsair reservoir and pump combo here. So that is installed. We have all the radiators installed that I'm going to be putting into this build, as well as all of Corsair's 120 millimeter fans. And on the back, we do have some of the Corsair commanders to actually control and do a lot of cool stuff with the lighting, which we'll show off towards the end of this video. Anyways, I'm ready for tomorrow. I'm ready to get that in so I can actually do this and bend this. But for now, let's get this GPU ready to go. So that way when it is here, all I gotta do, bend some hardline tubing, and then we're up and running and selling windows. I actually specifically waited to open this until right now on camera. I just kinda wanna look at it just to kinda see it in person. Oh, look at that, that's actually kinda fancy. Okay, all right. So they apparently have, yeah, all the sort of thermal everything ready. You just need to basically take off the one that comes with it and then place that down on it and you're good to go. I'm trying to keep these screws right now in as much order as I possibly, possibly can. I was gonna make sure you put stuff back the way it came, right? So that came off like really, really clean. Like I'm actually super impressed. I mean, obviously I've watched other videos where people have taken apart their GPUs, but like, it's really crazy looking at it. Like, plus just the sheer room it's gonna take up now, as opposed to what it was before. That is a very, very big difference, which is actually pretty awesome. So there's an RTX 2080 Ti with no heat sink or anything on it right there. Pure raw board and chip. Very, very different, very, very interesting, man. And there it is, completely assembled, ready to go. I really do like the aesthetic of this back plate, like a lot, I think it's gonna look great. Again, I'm sad I won't be able to see all that, but I think it's still gonna look good. I'm glad that it is so much smaller, it's taking up so much less room in there. And I'm just very excited to freaking move on with this build and get this freaking hardline tubing in. So in the meantime, I'm gonna actually put all of these back to where they go, all the screws back in where they belong, because if I ever do decide to upgrade to a 3000 series card in this workstation, then I can take that GPU out, take the Corsair water block off, and put it back on the original factory air cooler, the way that someone would probably wanna purchase it, and be good to go, and then not, you know, six months, 12 months from now, trying to remember exactly where these screws went, when I literally just did it right now, and I can put them back, and just save me a lot of time and hardship in the future, so. Just a nice little tip in case you do decide to do this yourself. 24 hours later. My silicone insert is finally here. We are finally good to go. Now, as I mentioned before, I think I did anyway in this video, I've never done a custom loop, right? So instead of just going with some soft tubing or even PETG, I went with acrylic hardline tubing. To give you guys an idea, if you're not familiar, that's like hopping into a video game for the first time and choosing there will be death difficulty. Yes, it's going to be quite a learning experience, quite fun, but there are some plus is to use an acrylic, it does look great. It's probably the shiniest, probably will reflect the coolant the best, the colors the best, and all of that. However, if it was PETG, which is like sort of a plastic acrylic-y type of tubing, I could use something beautiful like this, which is just like essentially a pipe cutter, right? And you can just kind of clamp it down. It's got a little blade in there, you just spin it around it, and it's awesome. If you do that to acrylic, you're gonna crack it, and it's gonna suck. So instead, you need a saw. So I guess, Let's get all the tools out here in case you're trying to follow along and let's see what we're gonna need today. Not a necessity, but a 90 degree tool so we can make our 90 degree angles perfectly using this. Some sandpaper. You're definitely gonna want sandpaper as you're going through this. Heat gun, very important as well. Also, if you are looking to do this, definitely get one that can stand up. You're not gonna wanna lay it down or anything like that. You're gonna be able to stand up, heat your tubing up like that. Some form of a miter box. You're gonna need some way to make your cuts perfect and a fine tooth saw. Some water. I put a little bit of soap in mine, it's gonna make that silicone go into the tubing much easier. Some way to mark your tubing so you can make your cuts as accurate as possible. I'm using a dry erase marker, which should be pretty simple. And a deburring tool. You're gonna to want this to make your edges of your tubing actually like smooth so it doesn't cut your O-rings or anything like that. And with that, let's get to it. The loop is done. The loop is finished. It is complete. It is the time now in any custom build like this, custom loop build that you are so excited for yet fear all at the same time and that's putting the actual coolant into the loop. As for the coolant, we went purple. Look at the branding. We had to go with purple and Corsair does provide this to actually fill it up. So I think it's that time. What? All 
Are you actually kidding me right now? What kind of luck was that? I had no idea that was a, an attachment on the end. <laughs> if that would have been stuck in there, this whole build put on postpone again. The fact that I was able to fish it out just Yo! Three days later. Okay, so it has actually been a few days since I went ahead and installed all of the actual water cooling. However, since this project already took so long, I wanted to give it a few days to get the bubbles out. Because when you first do all this, there's a ton of bubbles and it has to work all those out. So we are about to get to the montage, the moment everyone is always waiting for in these types of videos. But a few things. First off, if you've enjoyed this video so far or you skipped to this part, go ahead, hit that like button. If you're new to my channel, this is my first ever video, brand new tech channel here on YouTube. Consider going down there, hitting that red subscribe button, joining the community over here and being ready for the videos every single week. And lastly, one of the most satisfying things you can ever do with a new case or new anything like this, And there you have it. You have officially seen my ultimate creative PC now, and it's been awesome using it the last few days. Temperatures are solid, super fast, and basically what you would expect out of a PC spec'd out like this, which I guess I haven't just explicitly said what you're looking at here. So we've got 128 gigs of Corsair's Dominator RAM, an AMD Threadripper, 3970X, that is 32 cores. And then of course an RTX 2080 Ti, which by the time this is live on the channel, the new RTX series card should be out, which I think I mentioned at some point in this video, but for what I'm wanting to do with this PC, and it's not gonna be doing a whole lot of gaming, the 2080 Ti is gonna be plenty fine for me, and I will probably be doing a 3000 series gaming build probably very soon. Then after that, if you didn't notice, we have three two terabyte. M.2 sticks in this, and I actually ended up adding another two terabyte SSD later just because it was sitting here from another PC and I was like, I might as well use it. So that's eight terabytes of solid state storage in this PC right now. Also, the two capture cards that I primarily use for streaming and recording my videos are an Elgato 4K60 Pro, the Mark II model, as well as the Aver Media Live Gamer 4K. And then lastly, I guess of the main stuff here, the power supply in this is a Corsair HX1200i. Now this was actually from a previous build because power supplies are still difficult to get a hold of right now and the prices on them are super jacked up. With all that, to wrap the video up, let's see a couple things. Now obviously since this is going to be rendering stuff, I will be streaming as well, but as far as streams go, you don't need anything near this, right? Like this should be able to, I mean, technically the power behind this could run like multiple streams at one time. Like multiple people, if it were possible, could run multiple streams off of this one PC with the power that it has. So that's not really gonna tax it too much, but rendering videos, especially now that I've incorporated a lot of After Effects into my videos, that's where it's going to really shine. So first up, this is a Grand Cross video that I released a little bit ago on the channel. It's got a lot of After Effects going on, a lot of different effects, a lot of After Effects transitions. This is a really good example of how fast can this render out an 11 minute video with this many edits. So we're using Premiere Pro because that's what I personally use to edit. We're rendering this out in the YouTube 4K preset within Premiere Pro, which is a lot of unnecessary quality, truthfully, for YouTube, but still, it's a higher setting, it's 4K, 
And we're also gonna have an actual monitor for the GPU as well as the CPU temps. Now, before I actually hop into this, I do wanna note, I'm upstairs, I've got the AC off, so that way it's not messing with my audio. So it is a little toasty up here. It is middle of the summer. So I think in the room right now, it's about 75. So keep that in mind as you're checking these temperatures, but this thing is killing it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's been my life for the last few days. It's insane. So again, when you look at this, look at all the layers that it compiled. I mean, and it rendered it out in 4K, about a three and a half gig file. Switch of three. Now granted, this game at this point is a little over five years old, but still an incredible test to what a system can do, see what the temps are at and all of that. Of course, as you can see, we have everything sitting here at Ultra. We are just in 2K, but that's why I personally like to play, and I know a lot of people like that resolution as well. And then on post-processing, everything just absolutely cranked. Well, let's get rid of motion blur. But other than that, everything absolutely cranked. So Witcher 3, middle of town, pulling an average of 125, 120, 115 even, depending on where I look. Frames per second, keeping the temps 50 degrees on the GPU, well, 52 degrees. I mean, dude. <laughs> And then I could not wrap up this video without addressing the elephant in the room. Of course, if you came over from the main channel and you've been waiting on this video for months now, I appreciate your patience. I appreciate the support on this channel. Are you kidding me? 20 plus thousand of you coming over here before I've even released a video? I'd expect a few thousand, let alone 20,000 plus. So thank you all so much for the support. And of course, if you guys have made it this far into the video, this is your first time seeing my face, or you came over for the main channel, you've not hit that red subscribe button, consider going down there, hitting that red subscribe button, and joining the community over here and being ready for the weekly tech videos right here on this channel. Now, on that same note, if you did enjoy the video, you might hit that like button. If you didn't like it, then hit that dislike button. But that has been today's video, building the ultimate creator PC that I have been having just an absolute blast using lately. Anyways, y'all have a great, great day. Keep on keeping on. Tyler signing off, and I'll see you all in the next one.